you would like to know how I made this grungy envelope junk journal from three of these plain envelopes, please keep on watching. Hi, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. I love making envelope junk journals because they are so fun and I have quite a few on my channel, which I will link for you below. Today, I will show you how to make this grungy little envelope junk journal. This is a design team project for the Digital Collage Club. I think this should work with any size of envelope as long as they're the same size. But what I'm going to work with is this size. So there you have the measurements in inches and in centimeters. And I'm using three of these. And the base is super simple to construct. So I'm going to take my first envelope and simply fold that in half. And I want to be sure to have the flap on the right side. Then I'm going to take my second envelope and I'm just going to make a small crease at exactly the half point. Just like up here like that, so that I know where half is. You can also do this with your scissors, but I'm just going to take my paper trimmer for this and I'm going to cut this in half. Then I'm going to take the piece that doesn't have the open flap. So I'm going to leave that on the side for a moment. And I'll take this other piece and I will again fold it in half. This time I'm actually folding it. And this is going to become part of our closure. So this is going to go around our journal. And just because I think it looks cute, I'm going to cut off the corner here on the front and the back. Like that. Next, we're going to take this half, which is now a sleeve. And we're going to insert that into this side, but it's too long. So we're going to have to trim that down just a little bit, just like an eighth of an inch approximately, like two millimeters. Just a sliver. So the two flaps go together and you stick one into the other. like that and we're going to be gluing this flap down so we have a trifold at the moment now you can do this any way you want this is just one of probably hundreds of ways you can make this and i think it's so fun to come up with different ways of doing it so i want another one of these flaps so again i'm going to cut my third envelope in half by first figuring out where the center is And then cutting that. And again, I'm going to take the piece with the flap and stick it in the same slot where the other one is that we added with the flap. But probably it's going to be too long. No, interestingly, it's not too long. Okay, if it's too long for some reason, then just again cut a sliver off. But this one seems fine. So now, well, actually, I think it will be better if we cut it off. Yeah, let's just do that. We don't want any warping. Yeah, I think that's better. Yeah, so now when you fold it up, everything should be nice and flat, no bulking. So now we have our flap onto which we're going to be adding a hole here for the closure. Then we have our left side and then we have one, two flip outs. We're going to be inserting some journal pages right here on this spine and also right here on this spine. So we're going to have two little journals. And on this one, we'll add a tuck spot, which we're going to make out of this half that we still have left over. 
So again, we're going to cut this in half. So let's find our middle again. And then I'm going to take the piece that has the opening on the left side. So we have this on the back. And we're going to cut that into a tuck spot by just cutting along this line, which will create a triangle. So I'm just lining up to two corners where my blade is going to cut. So now I have this triangular shape. And now you could either add it as a double tuck spot by just gluing on these two sides and then you can stick something in there and something in here. Or if you want to have less bulk, you can do what I'm going to do now by just making the back portion here with the flap into two little flaps. So I'm just going to cut this part down. So now I have two flaps here, which I can then just add as a single tuck spot like this. And we can actually do the same thing with the other half that we have left. Again, lining up the two corners. And we have the tuck spot looking into the other direction. And again, I'm going to just cut the back to just have the two flaps left. And that can go on this side, which is basically the inside cover of our journal. So let's glue the pieces together. So I'm taking out the middle one. And then we have this first one left. If you have envelopes that have these paper strips, take them off. Now, before we glue this one into the other one, we need to get rid of the stickiness here. Otherwise, we won't be able to insert the second one because this part is going to stick on the inside of this, which we don't want. So either you cover it up with a strip of paper or you do what I do. I'm going to take a piece of candle and rub it on the sticky surface. There. And then I'm going to add glue to the back of that flap. You can use whatever glue you like. I'm currently using the three in one glue because it's here on my desk. <laughs> Sometimes that's a good enough reason <laughs> to choose a glue. And then I'm just going to insert that here. Make sure it's nice and flush and straight. And then we can glue this flap onto this. This is still open because of the wax we added. And now let's attach the second envelope half. Again, I'm going to remove this paper and I'm going to add again some wax because I also don't want this sticking to the top of the envelope. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to use it as a pocket. So again, either stick some paper down or use some wax. So again, we're going to add some glue on the back side of the flap and slide it right in. Again, make sure it's nice and flush and that it's straight. And we're going to wait with these tuck spots until we have our bases decorated. So these two outer flaps are both sleeves. And you can now decide how do you want your pockets or do you even want pockets? So we have a pocket here. Now you can decide, do you want another pocket here? But I think I want the pocket open from the outside. So I'm going to add some glue underneath here to close this off. So we have this pocket here and here again, I'm going to close this part off so that it stays open here. And now we get to start with the decorating. 
So I will be using images from the Digital Collage Club, which is a membership-based website with thousands of royalty-free digital craft supplies. Once you sign up, either for a year or a lifetime membership, you will get instant access. All images are created exclusively for this club. You get new images each week and you're able to sell the craft items you created with these images. So as I mentioned, there are two options available, a membership for one year or a lifetime, which means you pay once and have access to all the images and tutorials for your whole life. You can find discount codes for both types of memberships linked below in the description box. I would like to point out that I do receive a commission if you use these links. So it's also a huge help for my small creative business. As always, thank you in advance if you sign up or if you have joined in the past using my link. Please note that in order to use my codes for the discount, you need to use the link below, otherwise it will not work. So I printed these papers. These are called Vintage Invoice Paper Pack and I love these because of how versatile they are. So those are five different ones and they come in a square format. So there's one, actually I should turn these. Two, aren't they just gorgeous? Three, four, and five. I've printed these on high quality copy paper. I used to print on cheap copy paper, but I do see a difference in the quality when you use higher quality copy paper. And in case you want to know which one I use, I use this one from the brand Claire Alpha both for laser and inkjet. I have an inkjet printer. It's 80 GSM. I use A4 size. This is the number in case you're interested. I don't know if this will help. So I'm going to start off by just cutting out all of these squares with my paper trimmer. So once I have all my squares cut out, I can then decide which paper I want on which part of the envelope. And you can decide if you want to have your paper go like all the way up until the edge or if you want to do it like I'm going to do it I'm going to leave a little bit of a border always and I'm going to distress that afterwards so obviously it's not going to stay white so I'm just going to have some fun choosing which pages I want where maybe I want to first start out with what I want my cover image to be on this one here and obviously on this one here so I guess this one is the most important. Yeah, I think I like this one with the bird's nest. How cute. And that can then just wrap around so I can do that in one. So if I want to leave a little border i'll have to cut it here then i want to have this cut as well let's do that first i think that's easier let's cut this off and now it makes it easier to see where i need to cut here and here Then I'm going to distress the edges of my printout with my walnut stain. And then I'm going to glue that onto my envelope. Next, I'm going to take my flat brush and go around all the edges with the same walnut stain. And since I used an oxide and not an ink, I want to take advantage of the fact that it's an oxide and I want to try what Louise always does, which is to add some splatters of water so that the oxide reacts and then hopefully we'll get a nice grungy design around the edge. I'm going to take my splatter brush. Louise does it with a spray, but the thing is she's able to spray it so that it doesn't come out 
like a fine spray. So for example, if I would use my mini mister, it would just be a fine spray and I don't think that would give us a very good design. So I'm going to try this with my paintbrush and hope to get like some bigger splatters here. This will obviously work with any oxide. Okay, I do realize these are quite big, <laughs> but better than a fine mist. And then I'm taking a kitchen towel to dab it away. Do we see anything? A little bit, yeah. It very much depends on the paper you use. I know Louisa uses photo paper for this and it works really well on that. Since this is a copy paper, I don't have the same reaction. I do see that it does turn like a little grayish in some areas like here. So I definitely do see a reaction, but it's not as strong as in Louise's videos. And then we also, of course, need to cover the back side. I'm going to use this leftover piece from the front side. And I'm going to start by cutting that in half. Then I'll just mark where I need to cut it. So on this side, I'm not going to do one because obviously my paper is not big enough. So I'll do two parts. One I'll cut here and one here. And I'll cu also cut the corner off. Yeah, and then I'll just do the same thing as in the front. Oh, and I just now see that these are not the same. I do want these equal. So I'll just trim that down a little bit. So I'll do the same thing. I'll ink them up, glue them down, and then ink up the edges. And in case you're not familiar with the three-in-one glue, it's great because it won't warp your paper because it's not water-based. And it's also great for fabric. And if it's hard to find, if you are, especially if you're in Europe, then please look for the Kolal glue that's spelled C O L L A L L. I think it comes from the Netherlands, if I'm not mistaken. It's exactly the same ingredients as in the three in one glue. It smells the same, feels the same. So that is much easier and much cheaper to get in Europe. You can definitely see the gray coming out and that looks super cool and grungy. Love that. Thank you, Louisa. I just quickly dried this with my heat gun. Make sure once it's dry, you check that all your corners are still glued down. Like these two were both coming up a little bit. So I just re-glued them because of course you're making it wet. So maybe they come loose a little bit. So now I'm just going to fold this in half. And this, of course, is a pocket as well. So I'm just wondering, I should probably add some Distress Oxide to the inside here as well. I don't want any white showing even if we open the pocket. So I love how grungy that looks now, but what happened because this is not completely dry yet is I just tore this edge actually on both sides, but not to worry, we're making a grungy journal. <laughs> so I'm going to take one of my strips that are left over and I'm going to tear a piece. This will definitely benefit our journal. And I'm going to again, distress that. So we're going to turn something that was an accident into a feature. And we're just going to glue that on top there like a band-aid. And it's going to just add to our grungy effect and look like it was always meant to be there. I love it. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So we have our front flap done. Love it. And we're going to continue in exactly the same way for all of the insides here. 
just covering every surface and of course the outside as well. Now, if you have a design that is large enough that you can just add over this whole thing, that's definitely an option. I'm going to work with individual pieces. So I'm going to just do each side on its own to have this distressed edge, but it doesn't matter. See here on the outside, I've done the whole paper and on the inside, I've done individual papers. So either way is fine. Since I'm using these and they are square and they don't wrap around unless I make a really wide border, they wouldn't even fit for two of my sides. I would rather go with the individual sides and then have a smaller border. So this is the one I'm choosing for my front. And I'll add all the distressing at once at the end. This is the back side of my journal. Then on the inside right flap, I'm going to add this. I just realized that I can't take for granted that everyone knows Louise, so apologies for that. Louise is Louise Heinzel from Louise Heinzel Junk Journal Art. I will link her channel below if you don't know Louisa yet, I highly recommend you get to know her on her channel because she is super creative and has the most amazing ideas of how to use her junk journal supplies. So you're in for a treat if you haven't checked out her channel yet. <laughs> and she makes almost every single video, both in a German and English version. So not with subtitles, but actually doing the video twice. That's just... How amazing Louise is. <laughs> so now that I have all my surfaces covered, I'm going to distress all of the edges. And then I'll add some more splattering. And you don't have to leave the water on there long. Look, I've just sprayed it and look how it's already turning gray. That is such a cool effect. So I will continue that for all of my surfaces. Once I have sprayed everything, I need to let this dry thoroughly. I don't want to get any more tears. So I'm going to just stand this up and let this air dry until my next video. So I hope to see you back here in part two. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.